one of the things I want I want to say is your thinking impacts how you make your decisions. And I'm going to say this today. When you walk out of here, what's most important than anything is how you view yourself, more so than how others view you. Would you agree with that, gentlemen? Now, and what I mean by that is people have preconceived notions based on your appearance, right? Now, I'm going to just tell you, I don't carry a lot of things that others put on, put on me. Because at the end of the day, if someone, watch this, despite what we carry with us, ex-offenders, bad train, I mean, bad decision making, you know, single parent, not making healthy decisions, if you have reconciled, right, to yourself and repented of the things you have done and others choose to discriminate against you, you can't let that negatively impact you. Because as you transition, watch this, into the workplace, there are going to be things that's not going to be comfortable in that environment. And it's based on how others perceive you. But all I always say this is how you perceive yourself is more important than how other people perceive you. And we can look at a lot of people who are very successful who have a bad image of themselves with a whole lot of money. And I'm going to say this, always seek help. You know, the funny thing, I was watching Law & Order, and they said, she said, man, all your clients are very wealthy. How can you have wealthy clients and you don't have poor clients? She said, because the wealthy, no money won't fix their problems. See, poor people always think money going to fix their problems. <laughs> and what you do when you have a little, you'll do when you have a lot. Because because money is only the tool that manifests your behaviors and how you will how you will treat it. That's all it is. It's a tool. That's it. So one of the things, I, uh, a couple of things I like to say is, the first start is coming here, right? And that's a great thing. The second thing is, as he said, self knowledge, right? Now, how many people know the library is still free? We know that, right? So people say, I don't know what it's like to be a man. They got books on how to be a man. Hello? <laughs> right? Uh, and, and, this stuff is, and this stuff is free. I don't know how to be a father. You know, they, so we can sit here and say, I mean, whatever you say you don't know, they got a book for it pretty much. Right? And if you don't have the cognitive abilities to learn how to read, they even got programs out there for you to take advantage of these opportunities. So, and I, I, watch this. I guarantee you, if they made it law tomorrow, to be illegal to read, half of y'all be in the library tonight. And you know why? Because something is being taken away from you. And something is denying you access to get an opportunity to take you to the next level. I'm gonna bring up three men. I'm gonna bring up three men. And I and I want in the recesses of your mind, I wanna know if you had it harder than them. I'm gonna bring up Frederick Douglass. Anybody know who Frederick Douglass is? Fred, Fred had it rough, didn't he? Yeah, he had it rough. He had it rough, right? Now watch this. Beaten within an inch of his life because of two reasons, learning how to read and write. Now watch this. He persevered and got invited to the White House. Now why, and here's the other thing, while people still was in slavery. Now, now if any, y'all name may be Fred, but I don't think y'all going through that, yeah. right? Because he knew the importance of education. Another guy, Ben Carson. Ben Carson, um, gifted hands, right? Mother couldn't read or write. She made her boys, had two sons, she made her boys read every day, check their homework. They didn't know what she didn't know, right? <laughs> they didn't know that. Top orthopedic surgeon, right? Is, am I right about that? No question. Right? Magic so now, now, adverse conditions, adverse, right? Conditions. Now, I know y'all know this other guy, Ray Charles, right? Hello. Y'all know Ray, right? Y'all see the movie? Now, blind, watch this, mother died when he was young. Blind in a prejudicial South. I don't know, man. If those three guys can persevere on the excruciating terms and conditions, I, I, I think we got a little more hope, don't we? Too much. Too much, right? So when you think about that, and here's the other component. If you, I had markers in my life, right? He said we all got innate ability. One of the things, I was good with words. And, and when I was a kid, I said, I want to wear a suit to work, right? Not a sweatsuit, a business suit. <laughs> Not a jumpsuit, if That's you get right. what I'm saying. That's right. A business suit with a tie, right? right? Um, so I knew that I had to make certain decisions in order for that to happen, right? 
And I didn't have all the answers, but I just knew I want to wear a suit. I want to be able to talk to people. I'm good at convincing people. You guys probably have some of the same attributes, right? But I understood who I was and what my abilities were. And then I had to look and point and have markers of people who have established those goals, right? So if you want to be at a certain place and you admire people from a distance, read up on who they, how they got there. Like I said, like a Ben Carson, a Frederick Douglass, a Ray Charles. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And you have to take advantage of the opportunity that's presented for you. I worked in IT for a long time. The only thing I knew about a phone, you pick it up, you dial 10 digits, and somebody answered on another line. Right? And watch this. I was dating a young lady, PhD, not poor, hungry, and desperate, or she didn't have permanent head damage. Right? <laughs> she prized them daily, though. Some of them do. Some of them do. <laughs> and we was in the midst of talking about getting married, and I lost my job. I got two kids, single parent, right? I lost my job. I said, I'm going to transition out of, I was in graphic arts, I'm going to transition, I'm going to corporate America. I used to do stand-up comedy, spoken word, all those kind of things. And all my friends, watch this, who was dear to me, said, Alex, you're crazy, you're not going to work for a Fortune 500 company. They met well, because guess what? They viewed themselves that they couldn't do it. So therefore, they couldn't do it, Alex couldn't do it, because most people project. I said, I'm going to work for a Fortune 500 company. Pitney Bowes, Lucent Technologies, and MCI all offered me a job. The rest is history. I didn't know, I'm telling you, I knew nothing about technology. But I knew that I had the abilities and the capabilities to persevere, and I had a steep learning curve. And I didn't let information or the, the, un, the lack of it or the unknown keep me in fear. Mm -hmm. See, there's a lot of people who are free who locked up, right? This is where you start. If you locked up here, your actions will dictate that. And then you'll wind up being in, like I said, two places. Incarcerated is one, right? Because first you get incarcerated here. And then physically you get incarcerated. So, now watch this. My girlfriend at the time, who's my wife for 12 years now, said, Alex, don't go for it. And I was making good money. I said, babe, I got to go for it. So all I'm saying is this, when you know what you're built to do and you believe in yourself, because that's who you first got to believe in, right? You got to put the necessary actions and steps in place to accomplish those goals.